Hello and welcome to Impact Podcast. This is your host, Christian Candy. As you can see, we've kind of switched it up this week. I'm also on here with my co-hosts. Uh, they can introduce themselves as you see them in the screen right here. Y'all can go ahead and introduce yourselves. Oh, I'm Imani. Hi, everybody. I'm Darren. It's nice to see y'all once again. Okay, and we got a special host. We got a special co-host on here for you this week, and I'll let him go ahead and introduce himself on here. Praise the Lord, everybody. How you doing? I'm Minister Gamble from New Beginning, Way to Cross Church, and I'm excited to be on Impact Podcast tonight. And I'm just looking forward to have a great time. Okay, yes, yes, we're glad to have you on here. I've been trying to get you on the show for a long time. I've been trying to get you on here. I finally got with you this past week. And I'm glad that you accepted this invite to be on this great podcast. And just tell us a little bit about, you know, your ministry and um, your aspirations, everything like that. I'm currently a minister in training at my church. And um, I just look forward to reaching more young people in our generation, like allowing them to know that, you know, God is real, that we need him daily. And that the Holy Ghost, of course, is important to have in our walk with God. With God. And you know, I'm just striving to become the man that God wants me to become. Got you, man. Man, you're an inspiration, man. You're somebody that I call a friend. So I'm glad that there's other um, young men, there's other young men out here that's really striving to, you know, try to spread the gospel. So yeah. with that being said, let's get on with our podcast. Um, let's get with our icebreaker question. Do you have it of money or do you want me to ask? Uh... Let me pull it up. Hold on, hold on, y'all. <laughs> oh, what's a funny church moment if they, that y'all can think of? Anybody can start it out. Anybody? Okay. I, okay. I, I can start it out. <laughs> um, I remember when I was, I think I was a teenager at the time, but I was running. I'm a runner at church. I, I shout and I, I run and I I'm, I'm extra, but <laughs> I was running and I wasn't looking <laughs> and, I, and I like hit the wall and yeah, that was really embarrassing. It was funny. Like it was it, in the moment, it was a little bit embarrassing, but like right after I was like, that's kind of funny because I was tripping. Why did I have my eyes closed? Yeah, that is funny. I, was, I would say one a funny moment that I have, let me switch this angle real quick. A funny moment that I've witnessed is, um, probably when we had an event at church and uh, someone was running late. Somebody was running late. They called me, I was like, okay, um, I'm supposed to be up doing this with you up here because um, it was like some type of program. And then he was like, okay, I'm gonna be a couple minutes late. So I had to try to like stall the event to try, but it was, it was basically going. So I had to basically like stall until he got there. And long story short, um, somebody throughout this process, they was trying to like ask me tough questions that I didn't really have the answer to. And then it was just so funny because everybody was looking at me. They was like, oh, how are you going to answer this? How are you going to answer that? And they was like, it was like some tough questions and like some comments and I had to answer them. And um, it was just funny because right after I got done with the questions, they come in the door and I'm like, man, <laughs> it helped me out with that, but I would say that's one funny, funny story, I would say. Yeah. I would say for me, um, I sing on the praise and worship team. So like oftentimes we can um sing a song and like you'll forget the words. So that sometimes be one of the funniest moments in church when you sing and forget the words and you gotta even make up some words or just be quiet so you don't sound off. So yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like, that's why. <laughs> Like, that's why I don't be singing no praise and worship because <laughs> I'm like, you you really gotta be knowing like the words and everything like that. So yeah. that's like special ministry for people. <laughs> Darren? Um, well, I guess, uh, I mean, I guess it wasn't funny for me, man. I did a song <laughs> in church and I forgot the second verse and we had to basically like restart the whole song over again. and <laughs> and redo it and then you know what i'm saying so that was a funny moment for me i guess yeah, yeah that's funny <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it wasn't funny at the moment it wasn't funny because <laughs> we was like oh man 
<laughs> like, <laughs> did mess up. Like, we didn't even know you messed up at first. Like, we didn't. But then <laughs> you walked off and it was like, oh my goodness. You started, fl- you started like having a, a flip out for a moment. No, nah, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta run that back. <laughs> Facts. I'm glad you came back up there because uh, that's that's really good, especially like as far as you come now and everything like that. Like from there to now, it's like you do very well and everything. And I'm glad that you didn't let that moment defeat you. So right. Trust me, that stuff be it's, it get there, man. Yeah. It was good though. Like right after he right, you hop, you did like you just did great. So basically, I take my hat off to all the praise and worship singers, man. <laughs> gotta go through the week. <laughs> you gotta be remembering them lyrics, cause I know me. If it if it's not like a short song or like a song that that don't have that many words, I'm not I'm not gonna remember those words, especially have these maps. Yeah. Can, can I can I ask a question since we all on the way to cross? Mm-hmm. So. Do y'all know all the songs like of old? You know what I'm saying, like. Or like the classic. Absolutely not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I be feeling bad sometimes. I'm like, man, like I know a couple, but some of the songs I'll be like, oh, I'm supposed to know this. Oh yeah, when they pull out, when they pull out the waterway and pull out all the words, and even the bishops be up there like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody even knows the words for that. You know the main verse, but. It's crazy. Some of them, they have like verses on verses on verses. It's crazy. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how they even made those songs. Like back when, when whoever the original person was, I don't, I don't even think they meant to actually sing those. Because I mean, we can, we can commend them because they didn't have any lyrics in the back. None of that. They didn't. Have, they had Man, nobody. Going on straight word, straight Bible. Facts. <laughs> yeah. But um, that was a great that was a great um, opening, you know, icebreaker question. But um, for this podcast today, we're gonna be discussing different topics as far as like um, people in church or people not in church, as far as um, how people live their lifestyles. And um, a lot of times, what happens in the church or just generally, people don't want any type of accountability. So this episode is gonna be basically centered around people living double lifestyles, lukewarm Christians and different agendas even within the church because some people are in the church but they're not really what you would call of the church so um i'm going to open us up with this first question and it's um how do you feel about people that say they're spiritual but don't really believe in anything so what's y'all's take on that Hmm. say one more well (laughs) basically how do you feel about someone like I have friends or I have people that, you know, I know of and they say, I'm a spiritual person and like, I'll be trying to witness to them and they'll be like, I'm spiritual, but I'm not a Christian or I don't really affiliate with any type of religion or I believe it's a God out there, but, you know, I don't know if that's for me. So I'm spiritual because it could be a God if you like, they'll come to me and be like, I need, I need you to pray to your God because I know that he can do something for me because he's done it before but they don't really believe so Mm. how how do you really feel about that um can i start it out yeah um i would say number one that's a person where mostly they're double-minded like they're kind of like confused because some people might say they believe in like a higher power because you're right i encounter people like that daily or they might worship other gods. They might put their faith in like crystals and charms and bees and stuff like that. And they don't really have like a source. And like, I don't know. I just feel as though it's all about, like you said, people are like lukewarm. It's no really, it's no consistency in like our walk with God. Like we put our faith into other things. We put our trust in other things and we don't really put our trust in God. We say we're spiritual but we don't really have God as like the source of our life, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would just like to piggyback off of that. Like a lot of people, like you said, you know, uh, they get so caught up into what I, I would say more so, what helps them feel good for that moment. What, you know, it gets more into the man instead of relying on God. Yeah. So what happens is when they be like, they go to, from religion to religion, or from thing to thing and they don't really put their trust in anything because they're just spiritual 
so they get so they get involved with these crystals and all this other type of what what the astrology and things like that because they 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 know it's like it's witchcraft out there that can work but it's not something we should be fooling around with because it's not from christ it's not right. it's not if if we're relying on something that we can do like some sage or something like that that's self-reliant or things from the spirits we're not putting our trust in god so i would say when people say they're spiritual i believe that they believe it's multiple things you can do to basically get you to what you need to get to instead of saying that i'm putting all my faith and trust in god so i thought darren looked like he wanted to say something <laughs> like <laughs> No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't have nothing to say. Just tell well, I, I agree with what y'all was saying. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, like if I would say they feel the presence of God, but they feel something. They just can't put a, a title. They want to be able to put an image to it or something. I don't know what it is, but I think the thought of Christ has been tainted, like, for example, that picture that we always see that people say is Christ, they don't, if you don't agree with that, all of us, like, automatically you're going to say, okay, Christ is not, because somebody made up that picture, so now you're going to throw away the whole Christianity thing and just say, oh, it's a higher power because you know that that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I don't, I don't know, man, it's a hard one, man, like. It's like they can feel it, but they, they I don't know, like you said, they double minded. They they pick and choose from different religions and stuff and kind of grab what fits them in that time period in their life. You know what I'm saying? So Exactly. Oh. Were you about to say something, Money? I was gonna ask a question. Yeah, One go ahead. Um hold on. Oh man. <laughs> hold on. Oh, okay. Um, when you said double-minded, it made me think of this. Uh, it says, "Do you?" Uh, this question says, "Do you think there are Christians out there that avoid finding the truth because they like the lifestyle that they live or mm. the music that they listen to?" That's good. Definitely, definitely, they are. Do you have any? Does anyone have anything to add to that before I give my? Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, sometimes, like. If you're not careful, you'll think back to how much fun you was having. Cause you can't lie, it was fun, man. But when you come to realization, you know that it was leading to hell. You know what I'm saying? So, um, man, bro. Sometimes people be like, you know, I want to get it out of my system. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I can fully give myself to God, cause I still want to have fun a little bit. And then when I get old, then I'll settle down. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm yeah i feel that and it's also like like you said people dial, dilute the word of god like they use it for what they want to use it for and like some people might ignore certain scriptures or ignore ignore certain things and it's like i don't know it just leaves us very very like confused and it's like you said before no accountability we try to just find things that's suitable for us instead of just obeying what god said exactly exactly you got anything to add to their money? Uh, I was waiting on you. But we just say the question one more time so I can like okay. best answer. All right, let me see. Do you think there are Christians out there that avoid finding the truth because they like the lifestyle that they live or the music that they listen to? So no. they're avoiding finding the truth because of the thing they like doing, you know, doing yeah. what they want. I, I completely agree with everything that um, both said, and it, even with that question, there are definitely people out there. It's not even uh, just with um, music and stuff. It's with the shows you watch. We just we just um, this whole season is about untainted and how people um, have like how we're we're setting more so the agendas of the world, and people are putting like spells in these shows. People are putting spells in these songs and even though um, that's what's getting people to hear it, these beats and all these other things is these agendas that's going under our, like just seamlessly through our brain because of the waves and everything like that. We have to really, I wish I had a video, but it was a video where it, 
it was like a scientist. He was breaking it down. He was like, this beat gets people to dance more. And if you listen to the song that the, um, if you listen to the lyrics that he was saying through these words, he's basically telling people to like murder people and doing all these things. Um, as y'all know, it's a song out there called um, Murder on My Mind. And through mm -hmm. that song, you like, we've all probably heard it before, but through that song, it's basically just, it's a melody you can almost start humming if you listen to it, even just for a glimpse. And it's really not talking about anything but trash. And um, it's not nothing that's leading to Christ. So people, tying it back to the question, I feel like some people might enjoy a certain artist. Like, let's say that someone enjoys, um, like, Beyonce. a rapper. They, they enjoy <laughs> a rapper. And they're like, okay, so I know he'd be talking about some stuff, but I'm going to run from what everybody's telling me. I'm just going to put my head in the sand and run from it because I really enjoy it. And that goes back to um, basically pleasing yourself than pleasing other than pleasing God. And that's what a lot of people can get caught up into because I don't believe people do it necessarily on purpose. I believe like sometimes it's, it's things in life that we all desire. It's things in life that we will all be tempted to and we all had those things and sometimes we just be putting what we call what some, what some people would call putting our holy ghost in the shelf just so mm -hmm. we can basically appease our desire so um mm -hmm. yeah That's definitely cool. things that i i would even say that me personally i don't try to i don't practice these things but just me personally sometimes you'd be like you kind of like push some things aside out of your mind just because you enjoy doing it so Mm -hmm. I would say yeah. we all can probably try to do better on that. Yeah. That's true. Or you might get in that dangerous situation where you say, oh, God, will forgive me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so. Oh, yeah. I get what you're saying. So you're basically saying, like, um, you're doing it willingly. Like, you know you're about to go. Yeah, through. like, no, it's, it's wrong. Like, like, you know what? God, understand that it's hard for me to get over this. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna do it last time and then I'm gonna try harder I'm gonna fast you know what I'm saying yeah like <laughs> like it's just one guy that I know I'm not gonna shut him up but one guy I know he was like guy like forgive me for what I'm about to do and it's like it's funny when you hear it but it's just like that's not the type of mindset we should do because we should be like okay lead us not into temptation Mm -hmm. and not just like when we like because we all will like forgive our sins like we will always sin so we need forgiveness every day but we should not go into a situation already asking for forgiveness for something that we have not done because that's something our flesh wants to do you know what um, I, I i've been there i'm not gonna hold you i'm not <laughs> you know, been there. don't don't think you've been there <laughs> i'm gonna be like god i just gotta i gotta do this because like you know it's like a flesh of Romans 6 that we always read at baptism, man. Like, shall we continue in sin? Ooh. This man, yeah. Yeah. Gotta yeah. Love, that's Paul, right? You can correct me if I'm wrong. Was that yeah. Paul? Yeah. That Paul never played with <laughs> us ever. I well, think I, th I would do right. I do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's so relatable that's, but that's it though like one of y'all said a piece in your flesh and that's what that's i think that answers the question like that's why people do that we just want to please you know please our flesh in whatever way it might be music it might be food it might be i don't know the lord telling you to to uh work out more and you've been feeling that on your heart or whatever but you like mm. <laughs> i'm gonna chill <laughs> or the, I know sometimes it's hard, especially for young people, when it's like dating and stuff. And I'm not going to get deep into none of that, but I know this is something that comes up. Is somebody that you you like, right? <laughs> and then <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah. but and this is for church folks. Oh, but they go to church. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but da 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 da. And then you're like, okay, but I, I love them more. But in your heart, you're like. That's not right. You know what I'm saying? Like the Lord is tugging you another way. Be like, what? Like, why can't I be with them? We make up all these excuses, right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord, He says no. <laughs> so that's I feel like that's a relatable thing. So if you feel the Lord tugging you to go in a direction, it, 
in every area of life, but especially when it comes to choosing your spouse, you need to just follow whatever the Lord is saying, because that, like, that's the, I think that's probably the, one of the most important decisions you're going to make other than giving your life to Christ. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's who you going to marry. Yeah. And that really leads us to uh, like another question that I had. And um, as far as, you know, like the temptation of people that you surround yourself with, should like, let's say you have a friend that's out of church or he's not really submitted to God or she's not submitted to God and they're giving you some advice, but it's, it's like good advice from an out of church standpoint, but from a church standpoint, it could be good. It could be bad. How is it? Could you take a piece of advice from someone that may not be a believer? Do you think that that could be possible? Hmm. I would say it depends on what type of advice that you're asking them for. Now, I do believe, you know, I'm an open minded person and I'm like, you know, people just because they may not believe what you believe, they can still help you out in certain things, but to an extent. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be very cautious of who you allow to pour into you and make sure like that what they're telling you is facts. Because, I mean, you can learn something from people who may not believe the same thing you believe, but it's all about having that open mindset to you know willing to hear it mm -hmm. and I, I would agree there too because there's been some advice you know that i've gotten even from a growing standpoint as far as like um on a job or something that's like some people would be like you shouldn't take no advice from nobody from nothing if they're not a believer and i don't think that's right because it's some things you can't pick up that's good wisdom but you just got to know is this person telling me to take this job and I'm just going to cause me to be out on Sundays? It's going to uh, it's going to take all my time. It's going to take all my prayer time. It's going to take all the time I dedicate to God. But I, I feel like, like you said, you could you could take advice from people even if they're non-believers. But it is all dependent on what you do. Are you using that as they're giving you advice? Are you going back and ministering to them, or are you just feeding from what they're saying? You need to give them that godly wisdom when they're giving you their their worldly wisdom. You need to like you need to give them that godly wisdom, and at the end of the day, we're we're only here to to win souls and everything too. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta watch. You gotta like you said, watch and uh, I would say nitpick or just kind of take in what's good and then push leave all this bad out with that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So um, and you'll always know. You always know um, deep inside if something is good wisdom because sometimes God can use somebody that's not exactly a believer is like they they can just come in your life and speak a word to you that just like confirm something that god was speaking through you like it's been times where i've been praying about something and it's like somebody random pops up or somebody random comes to me or something and says something and it's like aligns with something that i was praying about it's like okay it's not this was not no bishop or some saint that came and said this to me this is just a regular person that i don't know i don't know if they're a believer or not but they gave me this um these words and it's confirm it's confirming something that God was saying. So gotcha. that's good. That's a good point. So what I'm hearing is from both of y'all. Wait, Darren, was you about were you about to talk? Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, like we just kinda kinda use our discernment. Because yeah. I always ask this question before as well. But from the point of view I was coming from, I believe I kinda got the answer that I was looking for, but like, let's just say you're going to school to be a lawyer, right? And this man who's a great lawyer, but he don't believe in God, but he can tell you how to pass the bar. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you would listen. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I say. Like, you listen to him when it comes to natural stuff. But the moment it comes, like you said, like, oh, well, you ain't you ain't going to get too far. Uh going to Wednesday night service every Wednesday, you, you gotta do this. Then that's when you step in and go, okay, I'm gonna put that to the side. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, you know. I, some advice in there that's kind of throwing you out of the will of God. Then that's when you put the heart on it and be like, okay, I'm gonna just kind of take the meat and like leave the bones, if you will. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> 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 Man, it was some. You said something about the lawyer. Mm -mm. Mm. 
Oh, okay. So the I know in the Bible, like we just we just had um, we had discipleship class, right? So they were talking about Joseph, and they talked about how he was favored. You know what I mean? And I think that's a good like example of how because. I don't think that he, uh, who was it, Pharaoh? He wasn't following God, you know what I'm saying? And that, and y'all can check me on that. He wasn't following God, but Joseph was still favored. You know what I mean? Like Joseph still kept his head down. He still was humble. He served the Lord and he was blessed by somebody that's, oh snap, that's like making your enemy your footstool. <laughs> I think that's a good example as well. Cause even with Daniel, like, all these dudes that was like in these evil kingdoms, but they were still serving God while serving that king in the name. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They wasn't, well, they were kind of ministering a little bit, but you know what I mean? Like they were still dwelling in these people's home, working with them on a daily, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they, and they, they learned from them too. <laughs> they were learning their stuff. Like they didn't, they didn't become them, but they learned, they had to learn some of their history and stuff like that. But they still stuck on that straight path though, either way, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great topic. I mean, it's something that, uh, something that I really wanted to discuss in here too. And uh, this is a different type of question I'm gonna ask. So I know we got like one or two more questions before we're done with this episode. But um, how do y'all feel about modern churches making their pastors or, particular people in churches superstars on social media mm. like they just they on zip they on zip lines they are doing a whole bunch of stuff and they're not they're they're i would say there is more of a production than a ministry so how do y'all mm. feel about uh that in today's society the bible did say in the last days that men will be lovers of their self so I believe stuff like this has to happen so that we can know not, what not to do, if that makes sense. Like if you see somebody doing something and you know that it's not right, learn from that. So I would say that the whole celebrity church mindset thing, it's gonna be the downfall of the church. Because I mean, it's not, it's not good because you're not supposed to make people, you're not supposed to draw people to you. You're supposed to draw people to God. And I think that's how we'll like lose a lot of people too in the church because like you said, it's more theatrical. It's more like a show than actually like a move or the presence of God. People not being saved, people not being delivered because it's so like theatrical. So you just gotta be careful with that and just guard your guard your anointing, guard your heart and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, I feel like, oh my bad, man. What were you gonna say? No, you can go ahead, you can go ahead. Yeah, I feel like it's taking a hit on the church too, because they they call themselves doing this so they can get more views, so people can come to their church. But really, all the all the world, the people that we're trying to win, um, are seeing is we're just playing around in church. Yeah. Um, we have a whole thing if y'all heard Church of Laugh. That's basically you do anything in church, it's gonna be on there. It's gonna basically almost go viral. And now that's what that's really what has become with the church is a whole bunch of churches of laugh because. That's all people are doing. They're no longer trying to save souls. They're too busy just trying to go viral or um, just doing whatever. And it's really, it's really negatively impacted how the church is perceived. And some people won't go to church because they be like, oh, all these pastors, all they're worried about is um, a Christmas play um, or they're all they're worried about is pulling up on the bins and they're not worried about actually like praying for people and stuff like that so they get so caught up into that type of stuff that it's ruined the whole image they be like it's just celebrity preachers they don't care about us so i would say it's really hurt the church and that's why it's important for us as you know young people to change what what people have put the stereotypes on churches they put the stereotypes on churches as people that self-righteous people that's um it's super strict you have to you have to like you know like we we live a good lifestyle and stuff, but people have get people got got it to the point where they're like it's almost impossible because everybody when they come into church they look at the church as perfect people, but that's not the case. We, the church is a hospital of sick people that's trying to get to heaven, so we need to change it from being celebrity perfect people in the church to 
a whole bunch of people that's just living life trying to get to heaven every day so I like that you said the church is a hospital I like that I'm gonna use that one it's not a hospital it's not an entertainment center it's a hospital mm -hmm. that's real yeah and I was just gonna say man I don't know it just to me it just seemed like a joke man like everybody is really looking at us as a joke to be honest because we just kind of go for any old thing man and, and some of these preachers like when people try to send me and i know what i said about taking out the meat and cutting the fat and all of that but sometimes i can just look at certain pastors and i'm like i really don't even want to hear nothing you saying like <laughs> i'm be bad but like trust me bro some of these dudes you can look at them and I'd be like, all right, you know what he's talking before he even opened his mouth. And sure enough, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like people names, but it's like <laughs> telling you some of these dudes, man, with this internet and I don't know, man. It's just really like a joke for real, bro. It is. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I was gonna, um, unless, can I ask this question or? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this part I have a question, so go ahead. Sorry, it's a fly up here. <laughs> okay. Um, ask. Wait, can you ask your question one more time so I can? Oh so yeah. I can just. Um, is I was basically asking, what's your take on the new modern church making everything a show? Perfect. How these people like how social media perceives the church because you know, um, the church is basically the big churches have ruined the image of the church at large okay um so yeah yeah this 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 kind this does flow into it uh so in ezekiel 28 it says it, it's talking about i think it's like a prophecy but this stuck out to me it says you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty then it also says your heart became proud an account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your your splendor. Um, so my question is, do you think convincing people uh, to be proud is like a part of the enemy's scheme and agenda, like within the church? Because in this text, I think it's referring to, they say like, well, yeah, it says that they're basically referring to the enemy in this. He was an angel, you know what I mean? And he was beautiful. And of course he was casted out of, um, out of heaven so and it was because he was proud so do you think that now that that's his same tactic within the church you know what i mean like let me make them proud and feel themselves so much that they 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 basically send themselves to hell too you know what i mean yeah can i answer that real quick yeah so so um basically I think it is a major uh, plan of the enemy because it's like we forget that all these disciples were hated. All these prophets were hated, man. And we want to be loved so much. Yeah. And we'll do, they doing all that stuff so that people can look, you know, at their congregation as good. You know what I'm saying? Like they want to put the limelight on their church with the hopes of getting that attention and having all these members and stuff. But when Jesus was killed, like everybody left him that was following him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So what make us any better than that? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. And when she when she mentioned that, the scripture that came to my mind was 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my, by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. It just really goes to show you that like you said, it's a proud thing. You have to be humble. You have to show humility. Yeah, definitely. And I would say that um, it just goes right into the end times agenda as far as people being lovers of themselves, people trying to be self-sufficient instead of putting their trust in God and thinking that they have the power, the powers in man and not in God. So um, the enemy tries to tell people the power is the people the people in great numbers you are the power if you get together and unified you can do great things that's what the enemy tried to say instead of saying that if we put our trust in god if we pray to him then he will heal our land he would come through for us he would do 
he would be our God and he would like make way. But what, what happens is the enemy's like, you can do it for yourself. Um, we have the whole thing of people, they like the word pride nowadays. But as we know, pride comes before the fall. So people try mm -hmm. to tell ourselves, be proud of what you have. Be proud. Be, um, you should walk with your head high and that, that whatever you're doing, you're doing it great and you're doing it alone. We get so, so caught up into me against the world or us against everybody else instead of saying, hey, it's not us against anybody. It should be us on our knees bound to Jesus. So I think it is a bad agenda that the enemy uses. It's one of his tactics to empower the people in, instead of us giving more power to God by worshiping him. That's good. Do you have anything to add to that, Mike, before we get up out of here? No. No? Nope. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is a great episode. I just want to take this time and thank you again, Mr. Anton, for coming on the show. Everybody give it up for him. No problem. No problem. Yep, thank you for coming on the show. Um, this is another episode of Impact Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for tuning in even through, this is the, what, second week of November now? So, well, I'm not sure what it is, but, you know, I'll have a good time. <laughs> but whatever time you were watching this podcast, Thank you for tuning in. And we've been doing this thing for almost a year now. So uh, in a couple months, it'll be a year. So um, thank you all for t um, staying with us. Make sure you like, tag, subscribe, share. Um, if it's on Facebook, share it with somebody. If it's on YouTube, um, comment and subscribe to our channel. Make sure your post notifications are on. And make sure even if this is a, a live right now for you, make sure that you send it to that group chat you send it to your friends you send it to your family because this can really help them and we're only here to impact the future by pointing to the cross and i feel like if we if we point to the cross more our communities would be better our families would be better our lives would be better because we are leaning on him and when i say him i'm talking about big h him jesus christ so um thank you all for tuning in and I'm, I'm going to give, I, I, you can find me on Instagram at one Christian Kennedy, one Christian Kennedy. Um, Y'all can give your ads, um, Darren and Imani, I'm going to give you your special spotlight, uh, Ms. Anton. Uh, so Darren, you first and then Imani. Uh, it's right there, official. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm Imani. Right right Underscore Imani. Yep, and you can go ahead and let us know where we can find you, um, Mister. Um, you can find me on Instagram at TTG Tom, and I'm on Facebook Anton Gamble. Okay, if y'all need all that information, y'all can just go press rewind. You can find us there. <laughs> and we just want to thank you again for tuning in, and make sure you come to all the. Um, make sure you you know like our pages, you follow us, and because we're just trying to lead more people to Christ. And uh, we we real people. We not stuck up. We not like that. We not, we not the celebrity Christians like they be talking about. They so. are stuck up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, thank y'all for tuning in again. Make sure you tune into our Rockstone Church um, weekly scheduled events. We're gonna be live on Wednesday night Bible study starting at seven. You can tune in for prayer um, at four on Fridays, Friday conversation with God, and Sunday morning service. Um, you can tune in there as well um, or at 10 at at 10 30 a.m online or in the building we'd love to have you with us there and um if you are upstate up there in the uh, dc maryland area you can you can go join and be with um our sister church you can um shout your church out too New Beginning Word Across Church where my bishop is Bishop Benaby Gamble. You can find us in Oxen Hill. And our services start at 10 30 a.m. Yep. So if anybody's up there in that area, make sure you go um, visit our sister church. And thank you again for coming on the show. We just want to impact the future by pointing to the cross. Let's get out of here, guys. <laughs>